And for our final story for this edition of the Rolling Stone, this one makes me mad, gang. Really, like, deep in my gut angry. Because as you know, I love history. American history, medieval history, um, early modern history, ancient history, Egyptian, Greek, Roman, Persian. I mean, all, all sorts and kinds of, of history. And as part of that, I also love mythology. Egyptian, again, Greek, Roman, Celtic, Chinese, Persian, Zoroastrian, because mythology is not simply a bunch of funny stories or pretty lies that are put together but don't really make much sense today. They are many times, they are poetical ways of looking at the world and arriving at the truth, trying to convey the truth, and in many cases, they are quite profound. If you really dig into the different myths of different cultures and get beyond the surface, they are pro they are very profound at times. Not always right, of course, but very profound. Well, guess what the left has decided to ruin now? You are right. Mythology. Something that is near and dear to my heart. Apparently, in 2018, a guy I have never even heard of, an Italian sculpturer named Luciano um, Garbatti, Luciano Garbatti, he made a sculpture which he entitled Medusa with the head of Perseus. Now, to understand this, his statue, okay, so Medusa is the Gorgon in Greek mythology, right? She's the woman with the, who, who instead of having hair on her head had snakes, and if you, she looked at you, you were turned to stone, okay? That's Medusa. And in the Greek mythology, in, Greek, in the Greek myth, the hero Perseus slew her and he put his head on his shield, right? And that's what he actually used, um, Oh, I forget its name, but he killed some sort of aquatic monster who was about to devour the princess of one of these city-states. All in a day's work for a Greek hero, you know? So, in uh, 15, from, from 1545 to 1554, so for, for nine years, a Renaissance sculpture, an Italian Renaissance sculpture named Bevenuto Cellini, Okay, he's a very well-known Renaissance sculptor. He made a sculpture of Perseus with the head of Medusa. Okay, it's Perseus gloriously naked, as of course many Greek statues are, and he was imitating the Grecian style with the helmet of Hermes. Hermes let him borrow it, and he has his sword in his right hand, and he's holding up the head of Medusa. He is triumphant over the monsters, right? Well, Luciano... Garbati's sculpture, Medusa with the head of Perseus, is the exact opposite of it. It's Medusa, the monster, with the head of Perseus. Well, that would be bad enough, but why am I talking about it? Um, Garbati made this abomination in 2018. Well, because a bronze copy of this statue, of this work of art, is going to actually be now in front of the New York County Criminal Court. This from the Mary Sue. Luciano Garbati's Medusa with the head of Perseus is an amazing sculpture that has become nearly legendary on the internet in recent years. They have a very poor definition of, they have a very lazy understanding of what legendary should mean. And if you look at the work, it's easy to see why. Medusa, the monstrous gorgon of Greek myth, stands defiant, staring down the observer, holding the severed head of Perseus, one of the many men who sought to abuse and entrap her. It's an incredibly powerful work, and now a seven-foot bronze version is coming to the streets of New York to shame men entering the New York County Criminal Court. A seven-foot-tall bronze rendition of the statue will be unveiled Monday in Collect Pond Park, putting what's been called a narrative of justice, reimagining the story of Medusa from the perspective of the woman behind the myth right across from a court where the sort of men Medusa is aligned against will come and go. The exhibition's statement on the installation, this is what it says, 
Garbati's 2008 sculpture, excuse me, I said 2018, it was 2008, mea culpa, I apologize. Garbati's 2008 sculpture, Medusa with the Head of Perseus, is a direct response to Benvenuto Cellini's Perseus with the Head of Medusa, which still sits in the Piazza della Signora in Florence. It is a modern, feminist take on the classical myth. In Ovid's Metamorphosis, Medusa was a maiden in the Temple of Athena who was stalked and raped by Poseidon. He was the god of the sea. Athena, in a rage, banishes and curses Medusa with a monstrous head of snakes and a gaze which turns men to stone. Medusa is herself blamed and punished for the crime which she was the victim. She is cast away as a monster and then, with the cruel assistance of Athena and Poseidon, eventually is hunted down and beheaded by the epic hero Perseus who displays her head as a trophy on his shield. Through this work, Garbati asks, how can a triumph be possible if you are defeating a victim? The sculpture is installed directly across from the New York County Criminal Court, the location of high-profile abuse cases, including the recent Harvey Weinstein trial. Garbati's Medusa stands facing the courthouse as an icon of justice and the power of narrative. There you go. The power of narrative. Because, gang, everything that I just read to you is a bunch of cock and bull. It is. It's a bunch of cock and bull because it doesn't even make sense. It doesn't even make sense from the perspective of the myth itself. Because it is true that Poseidon raped Medusa. Guess what? All of the Greek gods raped women. Okay? It's not something that I condone. I despise rapists. If it was up to me, if I was the you know, glorious leader of the country, I think that rapists should be, uh, what was this they used to do in England? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Hang, drawn, and quarter. They should be hanged, drawn, and quartered, okay? That's what I think should happen to actually legitimate racists. That's what I think should also happen to um, child abusers too. My, my, my criminal law code would be very, very simple, okay? That, I mean, so vote for me as Supreme Dictator of the United States and you can get a very simple legal system, okay? Works for the little guy, guaranteed. But all of the Greek gods, to get back on talker, all of the Greek gods did this. Because guess what? The Greeks saw the Greek gods as forces of nature. They were the personifications of forces of nature. They were saying, hey, what? The forces of nature, these forces, these mystical forces, they screw around with human lives, okay? This was their understanding of the world. They weren't condoning rape necessarily. They were saying, this is what happens when these forces interact with people. People's lives change and they get screwed. That's the first point. The second point is Poseidon raped her, yes. But guess who cursed her? Guess who turned Medusa into a gorgon? It was Athena, a goddess, okay? I guess what they're saying is that Athena is some was like the ancient Greek version of Amy Coney Barrett or something because she apparently isn't with women and the liberation of women because she curses Medusa, okay? Poseidon may have raped her, but he didn't turn her into a monster. Athena did that, so it doesn't even make sense on this feminist reimagining because a goddess, and not just the goddess of the fruitful vine or of fat puppy dogs or whatever. I mean, Athena was, um, I think the word we would use for her is badass today. She was the goddess of wisdom, but she was also a goddess of war. Now you might be thinking, but wasn't the, was, didn't they have a war god? Yes, they did. They had Ares. He was sort of the uncontrolled bloodlust of battle. He ran around hacking to pieces anyone who got in his way. He didn't particularly care. Athena was the goddess of strategic warfare, okay? She was smart. The goddess of wisdom, remember? Because Zeus swallowed her mother, Metis, and Metis actually gave birth to Athena inside Zeus's head, and Zeus actually had to have his other son, Hephaestus, kind of tear his head apart so that Athena could come forth fully grown. I mean, Greek myths, man, they're, they're, they're wonderful and they're beautiful, but they're weird, okay? If you're not familiar with them, they are weird. You read them and you're thinking, what the hell did I just read? 
and you want to read more because they're that good. But that is what happened. Okay, so Athena, a powerful goddess whom the Greeks idolized, worshipped, begged for favors from, she is the one who cursed Medusa. So that's the second point. The third point is that when Medusa is turned into a monster, she becomes embolic. She becomes a force of chaos, of evil. Okay, we're getting into the deeper meanings again of mythology. Monsters are not liberation figures. They are not, oh, we understand the poor monsters, okay? Ancient Greeks, I mean, forget that cock and ball. They're not Tim Burton who sympathize with the monsters. The monsters are completely evil in Greek mythology. They are the forces of chaos, of disorder, of, of, of darkness, the void, okay? That's what they are, terrifying to men and women, both. The heroes, they're the ones who set everything right, like Perseus. So there are two things that really draw my attention to this. First of all, I have found out in reading this story, finding this out, that apparently feminists have taken on Medusa as, as a feminist icon. And you're thinking, what the hell? Really, Medusa, the monster? You're taking her as your motif. I don't trust anyone who takes a monster as their motif. I mean, really, symbolically a monster, not just a fun little symbol like, ooh, cool, you know, I get a patch of a of a of a minotaur here on my on my right shoulder, and I've got the chimera over here. <laughs> Ain't I cool? Nah, when you're actually saying that Medusa personifies your movement, uh-uh. You are not only my enemy, but you are the enemy of society and the common good. So there's that. I mean, they really showed where their allegiances are and what they want to do with society on that. But then, this is also the point. If you remember our last video, I was talking about we've reached the point now where even a stupid tabletop game like Dungeons and Dragons have to be, has to be made woke to get with the times, to make it palatable to modern day audiences. This is the same thing happening to Greek mythology. Greek mythology is now being appropriated because no one here, okay, none of these idiots over at the Mary Sue who are wetting themselves over this, Luciano Garbati, the people who decided that the bronze version of his statue is going to be put in front of the New York County Criminal Court, none of these people are ancient Greeks. They don't own Greek culture. They don't own Greek mythology. Hell, they're not even contemporary Greeks. Keep your grubby little paws off of it, you appropriating schmucks. That's the first thing. But, okay, they're appropriating it, but they are appropriating it to again control the narrative. To control the narrative. Men are not just pigs anymore. Men are the enemy. And all the women, and women who are not feminists, who do not take Medusa as their icon and their saint and their goddess, are the enemy. That is what is being said here, gang. Okay? These people, just like Medusa, they want to turn us into stone. They want to kill us, in other words. Okay? Maybe not literally. Maybe not literally. But they definitely want to do it metaphorically and socially by clamping down on our minds and sewing up our mouths so that we can neither speak nor think. That is what is happening here. And as usual, with that rant out of the way, I am wrapping it up, game. So have a great weekend. Stay safe. Stay free. And I will chat at you later. Ciao.